Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Meredith E. Phillips. I'm a writer, reader, and bunny mama. Today I'm going to be continuing my series on music to write by by looking at film scores. Now, I am going to try hard not to get distracted by the movie itself because I do love all of these movies, but focus on the actual score for the film. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We're gonna start by jumping back to really the birthplace of film scores. This is back in the 30s, the early 30s and into the 40s. When movies were first shown in theaters to audiences, they were silent films. They hadn't figured out yet how to record sound to go with the movie. So things like Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton films are all silent films. And in the theater with the audience, there would usually be a pianist or an organist, or if you were at a really fancy theater, where there might be some sort of orchestra and those musicians would play music while you were watching the film so that you weren't sitting in just a completely silent theater but most silent films did not have music that was composed specifically for that silent film. Sometimes there would be sheet music that was sent to theaters with the film reels to provide for the musicians, but a lot of times they would just ask the musicians to play some music while the film was going on. And so a lot of times the music that they might choose it might not really match up to the story. If there was something exciting going on in the movie, the music might not quite match up with that kind of excitement level. And it wasn't until we had sound in film in 1927 with the jazz singer that people realized, oh, we gotta write some kind of music to go with this movie. So in the late 20s and into the very, very early 30s, the music that you would hear in these films was sort of background music. It wasn't anything in particular that was special. It didn't really match still with what was going on on screen. In 1933, you have King Kong, which had a film score written for the film by Max Steiner. Max Steiner is a huge composer in the 30s and 40s. He did the music for Gone with the Wind, among others. And he, along with the composer that I would like to highlight, were really the people who brought the idea of music for film into prominence. So Max Steiner is really important though to note because one of the things that he created was the idea that the music should match what was happening on screen. So if there was a big surprise, the music should indicate some sort of surprise. He also came up with the idea to use themes for different characters. I think one of the most famous theme music for characters probably comes from the Star Wars trilogy. John Williams did Leia's theme and Han's theme and Luke's theme and Darth Vader has music that when you hear it you know Darth Vader's coming. But that idea of matching a character with the music came from Max Steiner and if you watch King Kong from 1933 you'll see how he does that. There's music that plays when you see Anne on screen. There is specific music that's played when Kong is on the way. There's another prominent prominent composer at the time, Eric Wolfgang Korngold, who created some of the most iconic action-adventure swashbuckling movie music that you will ever hear, and this is the music that I am recommending for you to use while you are writing. Korngold had actually written a lot of classical concertos, operas, things like that. When he ended up in America in the early 30s, he was invited to make music for 1935's Captain Blood starring Errol Flynn and Olivia de Havilland, and the music in this movie is absolutely perfect. It follows the story of a young doctor who ends up helping an enemy soldier who is wounded and for this offense he is enslaved and eventually he breaks free from the slavery and becomes a pirate on the high seas because why not and it's Errol Flynn at his most Errol Flynniest and he's absolutely perfect but the thing that really helped catapult him and Olivia de Havilland into that stratosphere of stardom was the music in this film of course the two of them have brilliant chemistry they're great actors but the music really helps to solidify the adventure that is in this film. It's absolutely gorgeous, swashbuckling pirate kind of music. So if you're writing anything that has pirates in it, please check out the music from Captain Blood. So let me play you a quick example of the music from Captain Blood.
You can also check out the music from the Seahawk and from The Adventures of Robin Hood. All of these were done by Korngold and all of those movies star Errol Flynn. So let me play you a quick clip from The Seahawk. editing Meredith here it is straight up killing me to like cut the music so it's not just like the entire opening <laughs> portion <sighs> please look these up they're so good <laughs> I'm just like no I can't cut it where am I supposed to cut it I'm trying to limit these to like 30 second clips it's it is it's difficult <laughs> okay Back, back to the video. Corngold though did not just do this sort of swashbuckling action adventure type music, which I think that's what he's most well known for and it is fantastic music, but he also did other music for other films that's a little more classical sounding in nature. So if you're looking for something a little more like that, you might check out the soundtrack for King's Row. And I think if you listen to the opening portion of this, you'll see where maybe a certain John Williams got some inspiration for his Star Wars theme later on. So take a quick listen to the intro to King's Row. into the 40s. There's actually two films I want to highlight that came out in back-to-back -back years, 1946 and 1947. We'll start with 1946 and The Best Years of Our Lives. Hi, it's future editing Meredith just popping in because I'm trying to find a like movie poster for Best Years of Our Lives and I like this poster that I just popped up there. However, the poster artist has done a disservice of the highest kind to Dana Andrews. Dana Andrews and I will insert a picture of him, is a very gorgeous man. And I'm sorry, but this poster makes him not look great. So anyway, sorry, Dana Andrews. I'm defending your honor. Okay, bye. This movie is ugh, absolutely a gut punch of a movie. It's fantastic. I think it's a movie that every American should see for sure. But if you're from somewhere else, you'll probably enjoy it too. It follows the story of three soldiers coming home from World War II and the challenges that they face getting reacquainted with their families and their friends and getting back into just civilian life and normal life after they've survived this horrific event. The movie is extremely emotional and poignant and absolutely gorgeous. But the thing that for me in almost every scene pushes me over the edge in to tears is the music. The music is by Hugo Friedhofer, which he did do quite a few other film scores during his career, but I think this is by far his most well-known and his best. He did win the Academy Award for Best Film Score for this, and it is absolutely the most Americana sounding music you've ever heard in your life. It's so perfect. It fits that time period so beautifully. It has these melodies that just pull on your heartstrings as you watch the movie and listen to the music. There's parts of it that are very inspiring and encouraging, while other parts are highly emotionally charged. This one is a hard one for me to listen to while I write just because I know the movie really well and I'm thinking of the scenes that are happening while the music is playing. But if you've never seen the movie, which you should remedy that and watch it, but if you've never seen it, this could be great music for an emotional scene, or if you're writing something from the mid 40s, this is your music. This is it, because it fits that time period so perfect. So take a quick listen to the film score from The Best Years of Our Lives.
We're gonna skip quick one year ahead to 1947 and we'll be taking a look at the film score for The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. This is an absolute gem of a film that I feel like most people don't know or don't talk about very often, which is a real shame because it is such a gorgeous film. It's it's a delight. It follows the story of a widow and her young daughter who end up purchasing this home by the sea and she is warned before she moves in that the home is haunted but she brushes off the real estate agent and purchases the home anyway and it turns out the house is haunted by the old sea captain who used to own the property and at first he's very cantankerous and gruff with her telling her that she needs to get out but eventually they form a sort of friendship and no spoilers here but the end is one of the most beautiful endings to a film that I can think of. It is perfect. The other great thing about this film, and this is totally getting off track, which I told you I was going to do, but here we are and I'm not going to stop. So the film also has George Sanders in a smaller part, and he is one of my favorite character actors. He has this beautiful, deep British voice, and he's so evil, and it's just a delight. I hear he went up to London, left his little bride all alone. It's too bad. But of course for this video we're going to talk about the music. The music is by Bernard Herrmann who did a ton of music throughout the 40s and the 50s and into the 60s. He's probably most well known for composing the music for the movie Psycho and for the music in other Alfred Hitchcock films like North by Northwest. He also did the music for Citizen Kane which of course came out earlier in the 40s and starred Orson Welles. But of all of the iconic scores that Bernard Herrmann had written in his lifetime he said that the music that he did for The Ghost of Mrs. Muir was his favorite. It's a bold and dramatic score in parts and soft and very emotional in others. There's a sense of wistfulness about it, a sense of longing, and it's just highly atmospheric. So I think if you're certainly if you're writing a romance, this is the music for you. If you're writing anything with characters who are just longing for something that they can't seem to get to, this could be really great music to write to for that. So take a quick listen to the music from The Ghost of Mrs. Muir. The next film score I'd like to highlight is from 1990 and it is Edward Scissorhands. The music is by Danny Elfman and it is just the most magical sounding music. If you know any of Danny Elfman's stuff, he tends to do very whimsical, fantastical kinds of music that really fits the sort of Tim Burton feel that he has composed a lot of music for. But the Edward Scissorhands music is so beautiful. It's very poignant and again, emotional at parts, but it's very beautiful music and I think you could use this certainly if you're writing any kind of fantasy novel. Middle grade I think would be great for this. Certainly if you're writing a romance fantasy which is sort of what that film genre is this would be perfect for it. Similar to the sort of atmospheric nature of the music for The Ghost of Mrs. Muir this music has that same quality to it so if maybe that music from the 40s isn't quite your jam this is sort of a more modern take on that type of of music. Take a listen real quick to the Edward Scissorhands soundtrack. Okay, we're down to the final portion here and I think if anyone is making a video on movie soundtracks, can you not talk about John Williams? 
I don't know, but I'm going to. So I'm going to highlight two of his movies that he's composed music for, one that you're probably very familiar with and one that you're maybe not as familiar with because it's a little bit older. I do highly encourage you though, if you like John Williams music, then you need to go back and listen to Max Steiner, Korn Gold, all of those older composers because John Williams has said himself, those are the people where he drew a lot of inspiration from. So in order to appreciate where we are today with film scores you need to go back a little bit and listen to some of the older stuff because that's where it's coming from. The first film score I want to highlight and this one I'm gonna give a little bit of a caveat to it and that is the music for Jurassic Park. I think this is it's absolutely my favorite action adventure film for sure. How can you turn down crazed dinosaurs running around and trying to eat people like it's perfect right and it's got it's got everything you could ever want from like a summer blockbuster movie right and the music is just perfect it's absolutely perfect it's very beautiful in a lot of spots but if you need something that's really high energy it has tracks for that as well the only problem with listening to music from Jurassic Park is most of us I think have probably seen that movie and we're very familiar with this is the part where the t-rex is attacking this is the part where they're running from those like ostrich thingies this is the part where the velociraptors are getting into the kitchen. Like we know all of those scenes in the film. And so I don't know what it's like for you, but for me, when I hear the music, if I know the scene it's coming from, sometimes it's hard to then focus if I'm trying to write or do something else. Cause then I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is the part where the velociraptors are running after them. And I get really excited about the movie and then I'm not focused on the writing. So <laughs> if you do that, I wouldn't recommend listening to the Jurassic Park soundtrack. But if you haven't seen the movie, movie, I, no, that's a real shame for you, but then you could listen to the soundtrack and not be distracted knowing what was going on in the movie at the time. That's sort of my first half suggestion, but if you are looking for a John Williams soundtrack that is very John Williams-y, but you haven't seen the movie, I would highly encourage you to check out the soundtrack for Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which came out in 1977. There are a lot of tracks on here that are almost sort of ambient sounds and very jarring tones more than a straight melody. So if you're writing anything that is very suspenseful or has a horror element to it, some of those earlier portions from the soundtrack might be absolutely perfect for a really tense scene you're writing. However, there are some absolutely gorgeous portions of the soundtrack that would be absolutely perfect to use if you're writing a scene that's filled with a lot of wonder and joy. And if you've seen the movie, I'm talking about the portion at the end of the film so good. If you haven't seen Close Encounters, you need to. It's absolutely perfect. If you ever have the opportunity to see it in a theater, do that. Do it. But anyway, the music is an absolute delight. So let's take a quick listen to the music from Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Okay, I hope a couple of those were new for you and that you'll check them out while you're writing. If there are particular movie scores that you really enjoy using while you write, please let us know in the comments below. Or if you check out any of the ones that I've listed and really enjoy it, let me know too. There are of course a ton of other movie soundtracks that have great music to go with it. I could probably do a part two to this if you're interested. If that's something you're interested in, let me know again in the comments below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content from me, I do post videos on Tuesdays and Fridays. So do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You can also find me over on Instagram at Meredith Phillips Writes. Thank you so much for joining me today. Bye. That was a really awkward way to put all that. It would play in the theater. You okay. I'm really, I need a script for this or something, jeez. Okay. <laughs> when movies were first, oh, is this film dirty? Hold on, it dirty.